So hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Great to see you all again. Cheers for tuning in. Now in today's video, I wanna talk about the graduated filter tool in Lightroom. I've got two or three photographs that I wanna sort of edit with the tool to show you how I use it. Um, it's a really powerful tool. It's one that I definitely use a hell of a lot for my photographs and it definitely suits my style. And with us being sort of locked down and indoors, I'm finding myself well, I've just got a lot more time to sort of spend on photo editing, so I'm going over a lot of my old photographs and re-editing them. Some of them I'm kind of going from the ground upwards, just restarting and completely re-editing. However, I wanted to make this video because I've realised that the graduated filter tool itself in Lightroom is actually really important to me, and it really suits my style of photography. Now, for anybody that doesn't really know what the graduated filter tool is, it is basically your ND grad filter, but in digital form. 99 times out of 100, something like that, um, people generally use this filter like this. The dark section goes, this goes on the front of your lens, if you didn't know that already, and the dark section covers the clouds or the sky, whereas the clear section covers the foreground, which means that it just darkens down the sky and really helps to level the exposure of your whole photograph. But I'm not really gonna talk about that sort of technique in today's video. I wanna show you how I use the graduated filter tool in Lightroom. Now, generally speaking, the sorts of areas that I photograph, be it the Lake District or Snowdonia or Scotland, are quite gloomy and atmospheric, you know, beautiful, dark, textured, looming, um, foreboding clouds, I absolutely love those sorts of weather forecasts, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do as well. Uh, weather conditions, not forecasts. And I think what I'm about to show you, the way that I use a graduated filter tool, really helps to add drama and mood to those already beautiful skies. And I really wanna show you exactly how I do it, because I've got a few little tricks that I use as well. So, I've got two or three photographs, so let's jump into Lightroom now. You can see this first one here, it wasn't from too long ago, probably only about six weeks or something just before the lockdown, so quite fond memories. <laughs> and uh, this is in North Wales. I'll put a link up in the corner if you'd like to see how I captured this photograph. But yeah, this was a really cool little photography trip. And as you can see, the clouds are pretty cool and exactly how I just described to you guys, you know, quite, um, quite gloomy. But they complement this subject here absolutely perfectly. This beautiful Castell here in North Wales. Now, it's important to mention at this stage, this is a raw file. I haven't edited this in the slightest. So the first thing I'm gonna do is nothing to do with the title of this video. I'm just gonna increase the exposure ever so slightly. Half a stop, just to bring out the foreground a little bit. I think it was just a little bit underexposed. Now, as you can tell um, by my histogram, I'll move myself out of the way. As you can tell by my histogram up here, that is perfectly exposed. Okay, so like I said just before, I'm not trying to show you how people would generally use the graduated filter tool, which is this one here. You know, I'm not trying to darken down the sky so it evens out with the exposure of the foreground. As you can see with the photograph, the exposure's fine. You know, the sky doesn't necessarily need darkening down a little bit more. However, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So let's jump straight into it. Um, and this is basically how I would use the graduated filter tool a lot of the time, especially when I have these sorts of photographs that have all this drama and mood up here in the top of the photograph, i.e. beautiful, dark, moody clouds like we have so often here in the UK. Absolutely love them. So, graduated filter tool, this one here. Okay, and first things first, I'd just do um, a sort of normal graduated filter in the sense that I'm not really trying to create any crazy effects or anything. All I'm trying to do here is darken down all of them clouds. So I'm gonna turn on the mask overlay, which is this tick box down here, and I'm gonna drag it down ever so slightly. I'm just gonna, sorry, I'm gonna reset this so we're not getting any effects. And now, as you can see there, just like in my last video, when we were talking all about range masking, whatever's red there is, that's, we're only gonna affect what's red. When we turn to edit in here on the right-hand side, we're only gonna affect what is in the red, which is absolutely fantastic. So what I love about this tool is, unlike the physical um, ND grads, you can really choose your graduation, you know? Well, of course you can do it with these, but it means you have to have a ton of them in your photography bag, which I think I'm gonna start phasing them out. Um, 
I don't I don't want to use them anymore you know please let me know your opinion on this but I think they're a waste of money yeah controversial opinion right there I think they're a waste of money I think it's more faff when you're out on location you know when it's raining and windy which let's face it a lot of my photographs and all these photographs I'm gonna show you today aren't really in nice conditions in terms of you know general people and they like to be out in the sunshine these are conditions that I like photographing but they're not the best conditions to be out in so these are a hindrance if anything to my creativity they're also expensive right really expensive you're like at least 50 quid just for one okay and to get all of this different graduation like we're gonna be able to in Lightroom you need like a set of these it's ridiculous also, it's just something else to break, isn't it, if you're out on location. Like, this one's kind of plastic, I think, but I've got this soft grad here that is glass. And all the fantastic, but something else to break. So, I think I'm going to stop using them, because I love the graduated filter tool in Lightroom. And I'm hoping that today's video is going to show you just how powerful it is. So, we are choosing the graduation here. I want this fairly soft. I don't really want to affect this sort of white, bright area of the sky. I only want to affect these clouds, these beautiful textured clouds. So I'm going to bring it down and something like that will do me. As you can see here, I've got it on a little bit of an angle because obviously the clouds are quite angled, you know, they're lower down on the right than they are on the left. Simple as that. So that's selected and um, same as last, uh, the last editing video when I was talking about um, range masking. Let's turn the mask off so we can see what we're editing. So we've selected only them clouds. Any edits we make now are only going to affect them clouds. First thing we want to do is bring the exposure down a little bit of them clouds and look there. All I'm doing is bring the exposure down. Absolutely beautiful and already you see we're adding drama and mood to this image if it wasn't already sort of moody already. Now I think that looks awesome. Bearing in mind this is the first edit other than increasing the exposure of the photograph. This is the first edit we're making to this whole image. So bring it down as much as you want. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go for a full stop. A full stop down. Now. Another thing that I don't like about these clouds is there's a kind of blue tinge going on, which is very natural. However, I just think it's a little bit too much. What I'm going to do is decrease the saturation. See there, if I increase it fully, it's blue. I just don't like it. Um, I'm not going to get it all the way down because I think that looks too unnatural. I still want it to be a little bit of blue. Probably something like that. So let's look at a quick before and after. Already looks mint. Top draw. Um, the clouds are looking a hell of a lot more gloomy. And it's all about trying to accentuate and put more focus on this beautiful castell here um, in the center of the frame. Absolutely beautiful. Simple as that. That's done. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to show you a little bit of a, a trick that I use with my graduated filter tool here in Lightroom. Again, very simple. And all it is, I'm going to show you right now, show you right now. Get a second one on the go. Right? So forget about the first one. And again, I'm going to click the mask on so we know what it is um, we're selecting. We know where we're going to put the edit. Um, I'm just going to get rid of that and I'm going to reset that. Okay, let's try again. Quick tip, if you hold down shift as you're dragging down, it straightens the graduated filter tool out for you, which is awesome. In this case, however, I want a little bit of an angle, probably something like that. Now you can see here, I'm only wanting to affect the top of the clouds, not the whole clouds. And I'm basically adding another layer of graduation here and it's gonna to help to frame the image at the top and it's gonna help us, it's given us even more graduation, you know, the clues in the name. Um, so that'll do. So we've got quite a hard graduation here from um, the red to the clear, which would basically be like the black to the clear on your physical ND red. So we'll get rid of the mask there we go, so we know what we're editing. And again, all I'm gonna do is bring the exposure down. You can see there, it's so simple. Like we're adding an extra layer of graduation. Now this is, bearing in mind, you can still make the edit and then change the way the graduation is afterwards. So, you know, obviously like that would be a bit much, but you know, I don't want it to look too unnatural. If it was like that, it'd just look a bit silly. It'd just be a line. So I want a little bit of a graduation. Let's go for that, okay done and let's do, let's do a quick before and after uh, I'm just gonna get the graduations back up quick before and after on those <laughs> get that how simple is that but how much of a massive difference has that made I think that looks awesome absolutely awesome and again <clears throat> I'll say it 
bearing in mind, except for increasing the exposure of the whole image, that's the only change we've made and already it's looking fantastic. Absolute mint. So, on to the next photograph. Um, again, if you followed me for a while, you've probably seen this video already, but I'll stick a link to it up in the corner. This was a cracking little adventure. I went, <clears throat> this is also in North Wales, but I deliberately went to photograph this subject, this beautiful Neolithic stone circle. And funnily enough, I was actually taking photographs from the other side of the circle, because uh, we were getting some beautiful vistas over North Wales. And in the background, looking the way the photograph was taken, as you see it now, wasn't particularly interesting. However, we had this beautiful weather front come over and I got absolutely soaked. And you can see there the clouds are just absolutely stunning. Now, um, a little bit off topic, but the first thing that I am gonna do here is, see this little section up here? I just find that a little bit distracting. It's not a massive deal, but I can deal with it, so I'm going to. All I'm gonna do is use this tool here, the spot tool. There you go, spot removal tool. And there we go. Easy as that, just gets rid of that distraction. You know, we're not messing about with the photograph too much. If you wanted to, you could have also cropped down a little bit as well. Um, again, I'm also going to increase the exposure slightly. And it's probably important to mention that before we've made these changes, this was a raw file as well. Probably just half a stop on this one, so the foreground looks a little bit more um, correctly exposed. So, now into the graduated filter tool once again. And it's going to be a very similar concept here except from a little bit lower down because there's more beautiful clouds in this photograph. And it's all about trying to bring out the mood and drama and atmosphere of these clouds. They're already incredibly atmospheric, but what we're doing here is accentuating it even more, bringing focus on these incredible, incredible clouds. And it's just working as an incredible, incredible? Incredible contrast to this, this uh, incredible stone circle. Right, so show the selected mask overlay so we know what we're editing. And probably something like that. Play around with it as much as you want, of course. I'll probably straighten that one up a little bit more, but you can see there, the red is gonna be what we are editing, simple as that. Turn the mask off so we know what everything looks like when we make the changes. And I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing again, guys, to be honest. Gonna bring the exposure down. Honestly, look at that already. Like, what's that? Nearly a full stop. I just think that's a bit too much. Let's go for half a stop before and after. I just think that looks mint already. Now, um, bearing in mind that anything within this um, sort of dialogue here, you can change. You know, we've selected the clouds, but we, we, we don't only have control over the exposure. You've seen me do the saturation before. I'm gonna bring that down a little bit more. I don't like the blues. I might increase the contrast a little bit as well. Ooh, get a look at that. Unreal. So I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna overdo it. Might bring the exposure down a bit. There we go. Um, because if you actually look at the clouds, even though they're quite dark and gloomy, there are sort of a few patches of whites and highlights knocking about, which really helps to make this beautiful contrast. And again, it's that simple, that's done. And I'm gonna add a second one again, up at the top, with a bit less of a graduation, as you can see there. It's a little bit more abrupt from where, let me just click on it, from where the mask is to where the mask is not. Um, and again, bring the exposure down. It's that simple. And it creates this beautiful frame at the top. Now I think that's a little bit too much, a little bit too abrupt. Just something like that. It's fairly subtle when you do it like that. Honestly, that's it. And I, bearing in mind, again, we've not made any other changes to this photograph except from the exposure. Look at that. I think that's absolutely amazing, honestly. That's such a big difference and it's giving so much more mood to this photograph and contrast in this case as well. Unreal. And it's honestly guys, it's such a simple technique. It's so simple, but whenever I have beautiful, stormy, dramatic, moody skies like this, I pretty much always use this technique. Um, it works a treat. Done, so let's forget about that one. Now, I'm gonna do something a little bit different on this photograph but it's gonna work quite well in line with my last editing video where we talked all about range masking. If you haven't seen that one, I'll put a link to that up in the corner if you wanna go and watch that one. What I'm about to do here will make a lot more sense. Now, same concept. Let's get the, um, I don't need to increase the exposure on this photograph because I think it's fine as it is. So again, this is a raw, unedited raw file. So let's get him in here somewhere like that. 
Now here, we're, we don't want to affect anything below the horizon. We don't want to touch the sea or the sand. We are working only with the sky in this case. However, you may obviously realize this mask is going over all the rocks, which we don't want. Because then if we turn off the mask and we bring down the exposure or whatever we do, it's going to affect all these areas up here as well. Like, Look at that there. It's darkened that down. It's not good. We don't want it to do that. So we'll get, them, we'll get the mask back up. And again, I'll reiterate, we only want to change the sky here. That's it. So we'll go down to the range mask tool. We'll click on luminance and we want to increase the shadows. We want to move this red area. We want to move this mask away from all the cliffs. We only want the red on the sky. Um, because these cliffs are all full of shadows, whereas the sky are pretty much highlights. If we increase the shadows, bring this slider up, you can see the red moves away from the cliffs and it's only affecting the sky. Absolutely brilliant. So something like that. And there you go. You can see there, it's only going to affect the sky. Any edits we make, only going to affect the sky. Brilliant. Now, I wanted to show you a little bit more than just exposure and saturation. So yeah, we could bring the exposure down. But to me, still looks awesome. Still looks pretty cool. You know, we want to darken that sky a bit. We want to add a bit of drama and mood to this photograph. But there's not much te texture up there in the sky. So I'm going to try a few more of the sliders. One thing that you can try <clears throat> is clarity. If you add clarity, usually you can pull a bit of texture out of your raw file. In this case, pretty much not doing anything. So I'm going to try dehaze. If you increase dehaze, sometimes you can pull a bit of texture out. Hopefully this... Whoa! <laughs> Get a look at that! Unreal. So in this case, it looks a bit rotten at the minute, but I'm going to put dehaze on 100. Again, like I said in my last editing video about range masking, generally speaking, dehaze, if you put dehaze to 100, it's ridiculous. You shouldn't do that. But remember, we're editing the photograph. Forget about these numbers on the side. It doesn't matter. We're editing the photograph. Now, obviously, it's too blue. I'm sure we can all agree on that. So we'll just bring the saturation down. Simple. Something like that all the way down. Now I need to edit this mask a little bit. I think it needs to come down a bit more. Only a little bit. Something like that. So I'm going to say at this stage, it looks cool. It looks like we've added nice bit, a nice bit of mood and drama. But the dehaze is a little bit much. So let's just bring it down a bit. We don't want too much texture. We still want it to look natural, you know. So something like that, all right. So a quick before and after there huge difference now if you try and look at that right as i do the before and after but try and look at the photograph as a whole it just makes such a massive difference having that nice you know moody stormy textured contrasty sky up there it's so much better than just that it's basically like a white canvas isn't it so i'm going to click done on that um and then i'm probably going to do the old technique once again so I'm going to pull this down, I'm going to hold in shift so it brings it nice and horizontally. And again, if you want to, you can click there to see how your graduation is. Remember the red is what we're going to be editing. I'd like a little bit more graduation so it's going to be more natural. <clears throat> Let's see how that does. Of course, we can change the graduation afterwards if we want. Turn that off so we know what we're editing. And again, I'm just going to bring that exposure down ever so slightly. You can see there. Just this tiny little bit of subtle texture here is making such a massive difference. Might bring it down a little bit more. So probably something like that. And I think, you know, if you look at the photograph, what it's all about is the waves, the crashing waves that are hitting the cliffs. You know, the, the clouds, the sky is really, really helping to tell the story of what this photograph is all about. You know, I stood on Dalbeg Beach here in Lewis and Harris and it was carnage, it was windy, I was getting battered with rain and that's the story that I want to tell with this photograph. So there's nothing wrong with trying to bring out that story in your post-processing in the editing suite. And that's it. I think that'll do me. I don't need to overdo it. And I'm going to say it once again, that's the first edit we've made to this photograph. All we've done is change the sky, you know, we've got tons more we can do. We can increase the contrast of the whole image. You know, there's a lot more editing to be done of this photograph if you want to. Um, yeah, unreal, absolutely unreal. So I'm really, really happy with that. Um, that, incidentally, is, that's the final edit. So you can see the sky um, just looks amazing. And by the time I'd edited the rest of this photograph, 
I just think that looks ace. And I think if you look at it there, if the sky was just a white blank canvas, I don't think that image would be half as good. I wouldn't be half as proud of it. So yeah, the graduated filter tool is class, honestly, and I'd really urge you just to give it a go, try it out. Um, it's definitely, definitely something that helps me to add mood to my photographs. And I know a lot of you guys shoot in the UK and you know similar sort of places where it's all about these beautiful moody conditions. I love to embrace it. It's it's the the, the landscapes that I love photographing, that's what the weather's all about around here. So I absolutely love it. And this tool helps me to like create my own style as a landscape photographer. And I think that's a massive deal. So yeah, definitely give it a go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned a thing or two in today's video. Please comment below. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Opinions on physical ND grads. I think I'm gonna sack these off, like I said because the graduated filter tool in Lightroom is top draw. Please give the video a like if you have a quick second. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Out.